Country music has always been the music of regular folk, and from the big bang of the genre with the Carter family in Bristol, you have had musicians figuring out how to get their stories, their perspectives out to the masses. And over the last century, innumerable artists have tried to thread the needle of mainstream success, but very few have actually achieved fame. And the ones that have, no two stories of theirs are totally alike. You might look at the modern country music industry and think it is totally an assembly line, and look, in a lot of ways, it kind of is. But any artist that has really managed to make it has done something that differentiates them from all the other people in the pack. That said, some stories are more interesting than others, and today we're going to be looking at some of what I think are the most interesting career paths in country music history. We're going to look at 10 artists that blazed, or are blazing, their own trail. These aren't necessarily artists that are against the system, because a lot of them were a part of the system, but they are artists that broke the rules, whether those were real or implied. Some of the people are legends, some are smaller, some are more modern, some are back in the day, but these are just 10 stories that intrigued me, and let's get into it. First up, let's talk about someone everyone loves, Reba McIntyre. Reba McIntyre grew up around the rodeo culture of Oklahoma, and she actually competed in it herself and often performed with her sisters, with whom she was in a vocal group called the Singing McIntyres. Although she was attending college to become an elementary school teacher, one year when she was singing the national anthem in Oklahoma City at the National Rodeo Finals, A guy named Red Stiegel saw her and decided to sponsor her career. She got a deal at Mercury Records and her country career was born. And while that's a fascinating origin story, what makes Reba so notable is the way she has stayed on the bucking bronco of fame over decades. Not only did she establish herself as a legend in the music world with hits like The Night the Lights Went Out in Georgia and Fancy and Does He Love You and On the Way became the most nominated woman ever in CMA and ACM Awards history. But she's also had a lot of success as an actress. She even had her own sitcom named Reba. And she's a reliably witty and charming host as well and can frequently be seen hosting big country award shows. Then let's mention Johnny Cash. Because you're mine, I walk mine. Johnny Cash grew up in a family of sharecroppers in Arkansas, and as a young man, he was sort of aimless, but also passionate, and he was honest and wild, all of which were qualities that would serve his career down the road, especially as a down-to-earth, darkly honest songwriter. In the 50s, he headed to Memphis to audition at Sun Studios, and he wanted to play gospel songs, and they sent him away. When he returned with his own songs, though, it was a totally different story. Johnny Cash broke out with songs like I Walk the Line in 1956, and in the decades that followed, he became a true superstar. He even had his own television show, The Johnny Cash Show, that ran for three years on network television. Hello, I'm Johnny Cash. But it was Johnny Cash's intense desire to follow his convictions that I think really makes his story unique. He was a major advocate for Native American rights, even releasing an album called Bitter Tears, Ballads of the American Indian, which featured the song The Ballad of Ira Hayes about one of the men that helped lift the flag at Iwo Jima. Among the men who held it high was the Indian Ira Hayes. He famously played concerts at prisons, believing those prisoners deserved entertainment as well. May your walls fall and may I live to tell. And he always followed his religious convictions as well, bringing on a lot of his devout Christian ideas onto his American albums, the ones he recorded with Rick Rubin in the 90s when he had a whole career renaissance. My empire of dirt. Johnny Cash was prolific. He was willing to say what he thinks, and there's a reason he is in the country, rock and roll, and gospel hall of fames. And if we're gonna talk about Johnny Cash, we gotta talk about one of the most interesting stories ever, and that's Merle Haggard. No one could steer me right, but mama tried, mama tried. Merle Haggard was born to a family of Okies, although he grew up in Bakersfield, California, and he was a little hooligan of a kid. He was first sent to juvenile detention at the age of 11, and then he was sent to juvenile detention three more times as a teenager. And in 1958, after attempting to escape the Bakersfield jail, he was sentenced to a stay at San Quentin Prison. It was on New Year's Day in 1959 that he saw one of Johnny Cash's famous prison performances at San Quentin, and it was that that inspired him to join the prison's country music band where he really fell in love with music. He actually talked about that on the Johnny Cash show and the two of them ended up becoming good friends. Talking about uh, prison songs and that type of thing, John, uh, there's one thing that comes to my mind, that's Folsom Prison, the San Quentin album. 
Merle was known as someone that never minced words, whether that was on songs like Oki from Muskogee or Mama Tried, and that was true outside of the music world as well, where he was very outspoken. Notably defending the Dixie Chicks in all of the hullabaloo around their 2003 scandal with the Iraq War and President Bush. Given his outspoken nature, it's no small wonder that him and Sturgill Simpson became friends and wrote music together late in his life. Next up is a name that you might not have heard of, but I find her career so interesting. It's Lori McKenna. You'll outgrow your shoes. You'll outgrow. Lori McKenna is one of the most in-demand songwriters in all of Nashville, but she doesn't live in Nashville. She lives in her hometown in Massachusetts where she is raising her five children with her husband of 30 years. When she was 28 years old, Lori was playing at some open mic nights around the Boston area. One of her demos or albums got to Faith Hill and Tim McGraw who loved the music and became her champions. Faith Hill included some of Lori McKenna's songs on her album Fireflies. She brought her to perform with her on the Oprah Winfrey show and Faith was uh, was gonna be on the Oprah show, and she she thought that it would be a good idea that if I, I you know came along with her. So that's and Lori McKenna actually opened for them on tour. And despite the fact that she did score a major label record deal, it wasn't meant to be for Lori McKenna as a mainstream star. But that has not stopped her from writing country smashes, stuff like "Humble and Kind" for Tim McGraw. Always stay Girl Crush for Little Big Town, Cry Pretty for Carrie Underwood, I Want Crazy for Hunter Hayes, It All Comes Out in the Wash for Miranda Lambert, and even a song called Always Remember Us This Way that was on the A Star Is Born soundtrack. All the while, she has released 11 studio albums of her own, and she does it on her terms. Like, she's got her family, she's got her marriage, she lives up in Massachusetts, flies down to Nashville, writes some number one hits, and then just gets on with her life. I think that's pretty damn cool. And fun fact, before this channel really had any views or regular viewers, Lori McKenna's The Tree was my number one album of all of 2018. I gotta stop raving, I gotta post this video. Um, go listen, go cry, uh, and let me know what you guys think of this record. Then let's talk about Cody Jinx. But I'm not the devil you think that I Cody Jinx is kind of a perfect representative of the independent country scene of today. He hails from Texas, but he didn't actually get his start in country music. He was in the thrash metal scene, and he still bears some evidence of that scene, including his black nail polish. He started playing country music in 2005, and today he embodies outlaw country. With almost no promotion, no fancy photo shoots or glossy music videos, Cody Jinx has used his songwriting to draw in audiences. He sings a lot about his dark side and his personal demons and his over drinking and with a real gritty voice he has garnered some majorly high profile fans most notably The Rock who frequently features him and tells his Instagram followers to go listen to Cody Jinx. Cody Jinx released just one album with an independent label in Nashville his album Lifers but that seems to have been a one-off experiment as he is back to putting out stuff totally independently and that independent thing works well for him he has a cult following and his biggest song Loud and Heavy has been certified platinum. If you're not on the Cody Jinx train, go check him out. Then let's talk about another outlaw, Mr. Willie Nelson. Now, despite scoring some huge songwriting cuts early in his career, like Crazy by Patsy Cline. Crazy for feeling so blue. And finding some minor success as a recording artist, by the late 1960s, Willie Nelson's songwriting royalties had slowed down substantially. His house had burned down, and he decided to move home to Texas, frustrated with the music industry. I like Nashville fine. There was a couple of people in Nashville I didn't care too much for. Uh, it's kind of hard to... Uh to make music if you have people trying to tell you how to make your music. And paradoxically, it was leaving Nashville and going to Austin and becoming one of the purveyors of the outlaw movement that turned Willie Nelson into one of the biggest country stars in Nashville and in the whole world. Albums like Redheaded Stranger brought Willie Nelson huge notoriety, as did his annual 4th of July festival. But like a lot of the people on this list, Willie Nelson did a lot of things outside of music too. He's actually acted in over 30 films. He's an outspoken environmentalist and heavily involved with Farm Aid and even sang on one of my favorite commercials ever. He covered Coldplay on that Chipotle ad where they're going back to the start. I'm going back to the start. And he's also a famous stoner and kind of become an advocate for marijuana. 
From Snoop Dogg to Toby Keith, people want to collaborate with Willie over this connection to weed, and he's got his own brand of it too, called Willie's Reserve. All the while, the guy is still releasing new music. He put out his 70th, yes, 70th album last year. Then let's talk about Darius Rucker. Darius comes from Charleston, South Carolina, and it was while he was attending USC that he formed Hootie and the Blowfish that became one of the best-selling bands of all time. With a little love and some their debut album, Cracked Rear View, sold over 21 million copies. And although many people would probably be satisfied to rest on that level of success, Darius wanted to pursue a solo career after the Hootie era. He tried an R&B career in the early 2000s, and it didn't take off. So but he had been a country fan his whole life, and it was when he went to Nashville and pursued a country career that he saw a second wind. Although Darius said he worried about being accepted as a former rock artist and as a black country artist, because even though Charlie Pride was a superstar, there aren't many test cases of that. I always say no matter what happens to me as a black man in country music, I can handle it if Charlie Bright can handle all the stuff he went through. Mm -hmm. He has done what so few pop and rock stars are able to do, which is transition into having a huge career in country music. With hits like All Right and For the First Time and his biggest one, his cover of Old Crow Medicine Show's Wagon Wheel, which went eight times platinum, Darius Rucker has become a giant star in the genre. And I really mean it when I say that is not easy for people to do. Even though they've had some degree of success, Kid Rock never became a full-on country star, neither did Sheryl Crow, neither did Uncle Cracker, neither did AJ McLean, who was gonna disrupt country. I am coming in, but I'm coming in to disrupt country. It's not an easy feat, and it's damn impressive. I can't make this video without mentioning Dolly Parton. Just because I'm blonde, don't think I'm dumb, cause this dumb blonde ain't no Dolly has one of the most famous come-ups in country music. She was one of 12 children that lived in a single room cabin in the Smoky Mountains of Tennessee. She grew up extremely poor. Still, she knew she wanted to make music, she knew she wanted to write songs, and eventually, in 1967, she was cast on the Porter Wagner Show, where she became kind of his second banana and eventually a bigger star than him. And fun fact, in case you didn't know, Dolly Parton actually wrote the song I Will Always Love You as a career breakup song to Porter Wagner when she was was ready to move on from the program. I think that's got to be one of your prettiest songs well, that you've I ever written. That. And I'm glad you like it. I'll tell you what, you sang it just sort of like you mean it too. Like well, I didn't. did sort of mean it. Did you? <laughs> yeah. And as you and I both know, with songs like Jolene and Coat of Many Colors and Here You Come Again, Dolly Parton has had a massive, massive career of legendary songs. And yet, like Reba, like Johnny Cash, like Willie Nelson, she's also gotten involved in the world of film, appearing in things like The Best Little Whorehouse in Texas and most famously, Nine to Five. And she's leveraged her success into other extremely lucrative business operations that also employ a lot of people, stuff like her own theme park, Dollywood, out in Pigeon Forge. And she's also a prolific philanthropist. Her charity, the Imagination Library, has given millions of books to children that need them. And she continues to be a pop culture mainstay, appearing everywhere from episodes of Hannah Montana to the late night talk shows. <laughs> Safe to say, we will always love Dolly. Then let's talk about Scotty McCreary. This is it. This is now. This is what I'm now some of you guys might be like, dude, how is someone that won American Idol considered someone that blazed their own trail. And Scotty McCreary did win season 11 of American Idol. He actually beat fellow country star Lauren Elena, who came in second. But I actually think that's part of what makes Scotty McCreary's career so interesting. When Scotty won the show, he was just a teenager, but he was famous around the country for that deep, rich voice. And what he did after the show was surprising to a lot of people. He decided to go to college anyway, despite the fact that he just won American Idol. He attended NC State. And although that decision did not stop Scotty from finding some real success with songs like I Love You This Big and The Trouble With Girls, and he even had a top 10 hit with his song See You Tonight in 2013, it definitely didn't allow him to maintain momentum, which is already a struggle for a lot of American Idol contestants that see initial success after the show and then peter off. In 2015, Scotty released a song called Southern Bell, which would prove to be his last song on a major label. It felt outside of his character, very bro-ish, very stupid. The audience didn't like it, and when it didn't sell, the label dropped him. But 
what makes Scotty's story so interesting is that he came back with a vengeance as an independent artist. In 2017, Scotty released the song Five More Minutes, which has now become his very biggest hit. And give myself five more minutes. And there was such organic interest in this sentimental song that it's the only song in country air check and media base history to become a radio number one that is not from a major label. And he followed that up with two more number one singles after that. Now Scotty is a married man releasing the music he wants to release with a neo-traditional sound on an independent label and doing pretty damn well for himself. And then to finish off, I wanna talk about a band that I am always getting asked to talk about on the channel called Home Free. We Home Free is a five-man acapella group that was actually formed in 2000 in Minnesota by brothers Chris and Adam Rupp. And over the years, there have been many lineup changes, and they've dropped a singer here and picked one up here. But to this day, there are five guys. And since 2013, when they competed on NBC's former acapella competition series, The Sing Off, they have been a country acapella group. And while that does not mean that they are being accompanied by fiddles and banjos on these songs, they really are doing it all with their voices. The guys can freaking sing, and they have a lot of respect from bands like the Oak Ridge Boys and Alabama that have both performed with them. Christmas in Dixie. When Home Free won the reality competition, they were signed to Sony and then eventually went to Columbia and released a number of albums under that label. And they were pretty big successes. Are they selling at huge levels like Morgan Wallen or something? No, but it's a leaner operation as a vocal band and the numbers were solid and a lot of people love to see acapella live. I mean, call acapella cheesy if you want, and I certainly would, and I say that as a former member of a college acapella group. People love it, and these guys play all around the world to thousands of fans. In fact, the main reason I'm including Home Free in this video is because of their connection to their fans. These days, Home Free releases their music totally independently, including original songs. They use platforms like Indiegogo and Patreon to deliver it directly to their fan base. I mean, they just did a Christmas special a few weeks ago, and they destroyed their goal by like 300%. They have a super active YouTube channel, super active socials all around the board. That's a pretty great business model and it's fun. So it's cool to see Home Free doing their thing and I gotta say a special shout out to Austin who is in the band and is a fan of the channel and has said nice things about the channel. Thank you, sir. But anyway, that's it for this video. I had a whole list of honorable mentions, but I think this video is gonna be long enough. If you're new around here, click like or click subscribe. I talk about country music on this channel and I'm gonna be back with a bunch more stuff very soon. Love y'all, bye.